going to convert larger measurement, measurement units to smaller measurement units using multiplication and substitution. And whenever I start using um, a new concept, I usually like to start with simpler problems first before I have to move on to more difficult ones. So we're going to start with 5 meters and we're going to convert it into centimeters. And when I do this, I'm going to use a method here today. And so hopefully it will give you an idea of how you can do it even with more difficult problems. So I'm going to change 5 meters to 5 times 1 meter. It's 5 copies of 1 meter. And I'm just going to put the use the abbreviation now for meters and centimeters. And I'm going to try to figure out how many centimeters that is. And I always want to start with, well, what do I know? Well, I know that there are 100 centimeters in every 1 meter. So here's my one meter, and I have one meter here. I can use some substitution, and I can substitute 100 into my 100 centimeters into my one meter. So five now times 100 centimeters, and five times 100 is 500, and I get 500 centimeters. Put that up here. Now, I can always make sure, am I accurate? Is this a reasonable problem, reasonable answer, I should say? Well. 500 centimeters, my answer should be larger than the number I started with because I will have more of this smaller units that would go into the larger unit. So that makes sense. It's very likely that um, that's a reasonable answer. Um, let's try another one. Let's try five yards equals, let's see how many feet. We'll transfer, um, convert this to feet. So again, I'm going to use the same method. I'm going to rewrite my problem is five times one yard or five copies of one yard and I'm trying to figure out how many feet that is. I'm going to ask myself what do I know? Well I know that there are, are there are three feet in one yard. Substitution, here's my one yard, here's my one yard. I am going to go ahead and substitute and make it my problem now five times three feet and five times three feet is 15 feet and 15 feet is a reasonable answer. Well, let's get a little bit more difficult. And how about if we go nine and three tenths kilometers? And we're gonna convert this one now into centimeters. Same process, nine and three tenths times one kilometer. I'm trying to figure out how many centimeters. Now let's say I don't have that memorized, that conversion rate from kilometers to centimeters. So if I don't have it memorized, I just have to go with, well, what do I know? And in this case, I need to find a smaller unit to get myself to centimeters. And I do know that one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. Okay, well, here's my one kilometer, my one kilometer, and I can do some substitution. So nine and three tenths times 1,000 meters. Still not at my centimeters, so I'm not quite there yet, but I do have some more information that I know, and I know that there are 100 centimeters in every one meter. And actually, how I wanna help rewrite this one to help me with that one is nine and three tenths times this problem up here now. Let's rewrite it as 1,000 times one meter. Hence, when we get our one meter, and our one meter, we can do some substitution. So now we have nine and three tenths times 1,000 times, substitute in my 100 centimeters. And now I just have to multiply. And I like easy to multiply by powers of 10 because I can count up my number of zeros, one, two, three, four, five, which means I'm going to, in a sense, move my decimal, not really move my decimal, but my number is going to get larger. I'm going nine, it's like moving my decimal three places to the right, and I will have 93,000 or 930,000 centimeters. And, okay, reasonable answer. I have much larger number of centimeters than the kilometers that I originally started with. Let's try one more. What if we do two thirds of an hour? And we convert this to seconds. 
I'll rewrite it. Same process. It's always nice to have a process. And then you can, if you can follow that process with simpler problems, and when the problems get more difficult, you don't have to stretch. You can just go, okay, I know what to do. I'm just going to follow the same process. So I'm going to do two thirds times one hour. And it's going to be so many seconds. What do I know? Well, I know that there are 60 minutes in every one hour. My one hour, my one hour, I'm going to do some substitution. Two thirds times 60 minutes. Still not at my answer because I need my answer into seconds. So again, I have to ask myself, what do I know? Um, although before I do that, let's go back here and let's rewrite this. Let's rewrite this as two thirds times 60 times one minute. That's why we're trying to find that one minute. What do I know? What's equivalent to one minute? Well, one minute is equal to 60 seconds. Here's my one minute. Here's my one minute. I can substitute two thirds times 60 times 60 seconds. Now, before I multiply, I can actually do some simplification. I can put these all over one if I want to. And I know that I can divide 60 by three, which I get 20 and three divided by three, I get one. And so now I can just multiply together. Two times 20 is 40 times 60 is 2,400 seconds. So two thirds of an hour is equivalent to 2,400 seconds. Much larger number in my smaller unit than my larger unit. That's probably, that is one way to check if it's a reasonable answer. And I've used the same process over and over again. So even when my problem got much more difficult, this problem got much more difficult than our first simple problems, but the same process allow me to solve the problem the same way.